Hey, welcome everyone to our String Fino seminar series. And our first speaker today will be Sagar Hosseini from Durham. And she will tell us about symmetry TFTs of geometrically engineered field theories, please. Hi, uh, thank you for inviting me and for organizing all these nice series. Uh, so I will tell you about how we can construct uh, topological field theories which tell us about tell us which they tell us about symmetries and anomalies of these symmetries associated to quantum filters which we can obtain from um, string theory or m theory by geometric engineering and this is based on work done together with fabio federico and yaki and sakura in this paper and also work to appear within yaki okay so you know that for a while now that in order to specify a quantum filter, it's not enough to specify just its local operators and their correlation functions, but we also need to know what extended operators there are. Because when we have extended operators, these can be charge operators, which generate symmetries or defects, which are charged operators. And these are the ones which these symmetry operators act on. And in a given quantum filter, we, with a given local structure, we can have different um, these different kind of these extended operators. We have a set of choices. Uh, we have different choices, which extended objects we realize in the theory. And so theories with a different with different extended operators, uh, operators would have different symmetries. And these symmetries, they can be classified uh, via anomaly inflow by a theory called the BF theory in one dimension higher. And it works that, um, the boundary conditions for this BF theory tells us about the possible choices of symmetries, as we will see in the next slide. Um, so the aim of this talk is to discuss how we can obtain this BF theory uh, from a reduction of a string theory or M theory um, by looking at actions for self-dual fields that live in M theory or string theory. Okay, so how does this BF theory look like? It has an action of the form K integral over D plus one dimensional space B wedge DA, where DA is F, so it's a, that's why it's called a BF theory. And uh, this theory um, has lives on ND plus one, and it this ND plus one is a ma manifold is a space which has boundary uh, here on the right, uh, where we have the theory tau in one dimension lower living. And I call this a relative theory because it's defined relative to this BF theory. And then uh, on the left-hand side, we have boundary conditions. This here on this ID, we, we specify boundary conditions for these gauge fields B and A. So these gauge fields, uh, they can end on the boundary or they can not end on the boundary. And if they don't end on the boundary, they uh, generate symmetries. Um, they correspond to operators generating symmetries on this boundary theory. And if they don't, they do end on the boundary. Then in that case, um, we get defects, which the symmetry operators act on. And so, given that we can have different different boundary conditions for this A and B, uh, means that we can have different symmetries in this boundary theory. And now, if we fix the boundary condition uh, on the left, then uh, we collapse this yellow bit, and then we get an absolute theory on the, on the right-hand side. And then um, we call that theory that we obtain an absolute theory. Now, in general, these gauge fields B and A, they may have anomalies, in which case this picture modifies uh, to the one here, where on the left now, you have this invertible anomaly theory. And here, once you fix the boundary condition on ID, then you get this absolute theory, uh, which has this anomaly theory um, where the anomalies of this theory in D plus one dimension match the anomalies of this anomalous absolute theory. And now the question is how can we find this BF theory from the symmetry theory, which um, I have here from, um, from a string theory M theory. So we can do this by dimensional reduction. So first let's, look at constructing a theory in D dimensions. We can do this by putting a string theory or M theory on this product manifold where CL is a Calabria. It is singular and it has asymptotic boundary. So it's non-compact. Um, so we are decoupling gravity here. And that's why we have symmetries. If we didn't 
do that. And if it, if it takes CL to be compact, then we wouldn't find any symmetries, uh, which is consistent with the non-global symmetry conjecture. But since we have we are looking at the non-compact CL, then we'll find symmetries. Uh, and so reducing on this CL, we get a theory on MD, as a filter on MD. And um, now this uh, this set of data um, of geometric engineering, it doesn't tell us about these choices of different symmetries. What we need to do is to kind of strike this symmetry TFT. And the question is, how do we get this uh, from a string theory or M theory? So this uh, was something that uh, we looked at in this paper, um, building out on these previous works. And there, instead of taking a string theory and putting it on this CL times MD, we take, take it and put it on this asymptotic boundary of CL, which is L times ND plus one, where ND is a space which has a, which has a boundary uh, where our filter lives. So in, in this way, uh, we, we show that if we put string theory on this space and reduce on L, we find this D plus one dimensional theory, which is the symmetry TFT. So uh, here again, we have say M theory, we put it on this L times N D plus one, we reduce on L, we get the symmetry TFT. And then at the boundary, we have this MD where the relative theory lives. Um, so what we did in this paper was specifically look at the uh, topological action in M theory, which is this term, these terms, which are these terms. Um, and we put it on this L times ND plus one, we integrated over L and then we found a D plus one dimensional theory. And this, this D plus dimensional theory told us about anomalies of, that we can have in the symmetry TFT for our, for our theory here. Um, now, the one thing we, we weren't sure quite how to do in, in this setup was how to get the BF theory whose action we saw earlier. Uh, and we didn't know what kind of action we need to reduce in M theory to get the BF theory. So we would like to answer this question, but before doing so, let us um, think about how we, want, how we want to define these gauge fields, because the reason that we see this non-trivial symmetry TFD or BF theory is because this L that we look at, um, it has torsion of cycles. And, and so we need, we need our fields to be defined such that this information is taken into account. Uh, so usually uh, when we are, we are defining our gauge fields, we say they live in drum cohomology where you have real coefficients, but more generally you could have integer coefficients. And since this group, uh, this is integral cohomology, it has all these different, uh, so this is a finitely generated abelian groups, which it can be, means it can always be decomposed in, in this fashion uh, as three factors plus these uh, torsional factors. So this is what I call torsion, torsional groups. Um, and these are cyclic groups of order K1, K2, and so on. And now if you are strict to this uh, coefficients to be in R, uh, then we are basically multiplying this by R and then we only see these three factors and we are killing all of these torsional factors. So more generally, we need to define our fields so that we see these torsional effects. So let's let's do that. Uh, so if you have a P minus form form gauge field, um, you want to define it uh, with the following data. So we want to have its curvature, which is a closed form, a P form, because the P minus one form, uh, and then there is this characteristic class and which lives in integral cohomology with integral coefficients, uh, with integer coefficients. This is exactly what tells us about these torsional cycles. And then there is a connection associated to this uh, gauge field, uh, which is a P minus one form, uh, sorry, uh, which is a cochain in general, uh, and it's of degree P minus one with real coefficients. So um, I present such a, gauge field by this triplet, uh, and I call it A with this funny hat. Um, now, now N is uh, a class, uh, so it's a co-boundary, so it's D of it is zero. F is a closed form, so D of it is zero, but in general, D of A is uh, F minus N. And uh, only if when N is zero, when the 
this class is topologically trivial is when we can write f as da to be a globally well-defined uh, relation for fb to be da. So in general, we have this non-trivial relation. Okay, um, so the question was, how do we get this BF theory? Um, so to answer this, let's think about the origin of BF theory first. So, uh, so in, in quantum field theory, usually when we, we want to do Hamiltonian quantization, we'll take a Hilbert space, uh, which is defined on a special slice. So in M theory or string theory, we do the same. We take a special slice, and if we take the time to be the radial direction, then we can take the special slice as t at the fixed time t going to infinity and take the special slice to be at the, to be the asymptotic boundary of this x, which uh, would be boundary of CL times M, but M doesn't have a boundary, so it would be just L times M. Now, so thinking about this uh, string theory or M theory as, this gen as a generalized Maxwell theory, then the gauge equivalent classes of fields, these are given, say, for example, let's take F7 uh, to, to be our gauge common classes of fields. And then um, this F, uh, F7 has this characteristic class, which I call here M. It uh, labels a magnetic charge, and then it has the connection C6 and curvature R7. This means our Hilbert space is going to have a grading by these magnetic fluxes. Now, by electromagnetic duality, um, we can equivalently take the dual of this field f7 which is f4 uh, in that case we would get that our Hilbert space has a gradient by electric fluxes um, now a natural question is can we uh, actually measure these electric and magnetic fluxes at the same time can or other words can we grade the Hilbert space in terms of both and magnetic fluxes and to answer this uh, Let's uh, think about quantum mechanics. So there we have, uh, say, position and momentum there. And uh, in order to see if uh, we can measure them at the same time, we look at their commutation relations. So we can do something similar here. Uh, so if we take a magnetic charge uh, M to be a class in H7 of this boundary of X, then in order to measure the electric charge, we shift this F7 by a flat field uh, as an ion state of the Hamiltonian. And then under this translation, uh, we can, mm, since this is an ion, ion state of the Hamiltonian, it, we get this phase um, and uh, we get the electric charge. But in general, uh, this five, it's not topologically trivial. This means that we are going to shift this M. Um, by some something that comes from phi, from by the characteristic class of phi, which is non-trivial, which means we change the magnetic charge in measuring the electric charge. So this means these uh, two fluxes, electric and magnetic fluxes, they do not commute. So we cannot measure them at the same time. And this is encoded in this uh, commutation relation here, uh, where these are the fluxes associated to F7 and F4. And uh, this is the linking between these uh, co-cycles in cohomology on the boundary. So when we look at an example uh, such as the following, so say we put take x11, so we have m theory in 11 dimensions, we put it on C2 mod Zn times m7 to get a seven dimensional theory. And then we look at its boundary, which is uh, S3 mod Zn times m7. In this example, these uh, fluxes, they reduce to electric and magnetic operators in the seven dimensional theory. And uh, because these don't commute, this means these electric and magnetic fluxes are not going to commute either. And uh, by, this, by this relation, where this uh, L of TT prime is the linking on this, of these torsional cycles on a stream mode that then, and, uh, this is the intersection of the cycles on M7. So we, and this is this is telling us again that these uh, magnetic and electric operators they do not commute, and these arise from F4 and F7. So if we were to get to this BF theory from a reduction of an action, it would be one that in, contains both F4 and F7. 
And the closest object we have in mTOR is the kinetic action, which is S integral of F4 register F4, and uh, knowing that uh, F4 and F7 are dual. This looks like the right thing to look at. But um, this uh, reduction of this doesn't quite give us the BF theory. We have to do something slightly different. Um, and what we have to do is to construct a 12 dimensional action, uh, which is a Charon Simon action, which uh, realizes these um, uh, gauge fields as boundary modes. Um, and so here I'm taking F4 and F7 as a pair. Uh, a self dual pair, and I want to construct the Chern Simon, which um, as boundary modes has these, these self dual fields. Um, so, to go from M11 dimension to 12 dimension, what I do, I extend this ND plus one, uh, which was where my BF theory was fine, to ZD plus two, and define my Chern Simon to that 12 dimension L times ZD plus two, where N is the boundary of Z. So then if I reduce the 12 dimensional Chern Simon theory on L, I find a D plus two dimensional theory. And then by using a Stokes law, I can go to the boundary and get the BF theory. So that's the idea. Now, uh, how do we construct this Chern Simon theory? So remember that we said that we have to take care of these um, fields to be more generally topologically non-trivial, so we need to redefine our chance time theory. Um, so usually when we write the U1 chance time theory, it's of the form K integral of A which DA integrated over M3. And K has to be an integer because of gauge invariance, but then when we have a spinner structure, we know this quantity is even, so we can divide by two. Now, now, since we have two A's here in this action, uh, we want to define the product of this in, in order to define this chern Simon for topologically non-trivial fields, we want to define the product of two, two of such fields. So say we have two fields A and B uh, with components. Uh, so this is the characteristic class of this gauge field. Uh, this is the connection, this is the curvature. And similarly for B, then the product of such two gauge fields would be as follows. So the Characteristic class of the product is the coproduct of the characteristic classes, and the curvature would be just the cup the wedge product of the curvature. But then uh, the connection of these two would uh, would have a more complicated form. So it would be the characteristic class of the first gauge field times the connection of the second one plus the connection of the first one times the curvature of the second one plus uh, H of F A F B, where this H is some homotopy uh, map from chains to uh, from differential form, sorry, to co-chains. So it defines some homotopy equivalence between wedge product and cup product. And now we can define our chain Simon P to be just a product of uh, one of these gauge fields with itself. And um, so now we are in. So we are looking at A being a 2p minus 1 from gauge field, and this chain assignment is defined over a 4p minus 1 dimensional space. So if p is 1, this would be a 1 form, and this would be a 3-dimensional space uh, to get the, back the 3D chain assignment theory. And then if we have a topologically trivial gauge field, n is 0, so this is 0, and this one can be set to 0, so we get, we get A. Uh, times dA, which is what we had originally. So uh, taking this definition uh, for A times A would give us a more general transignment for these gauge fields being topologically non-trivial. Now, uh, note that the first component and the last component, uh, these have dimension one higher than what we are integrating over. Uh, so they would be 4p of degree, sorry, I mean, they would have degree higher. So they would have degree 4p, so those would vanish. So this is the connection part is the only part that's non-trivial. Um, now here, again, we have division by two. So before when we had a spinner structure, that was okay because we knew this was even. Now we need to generalize this spinner structure, a structure to what's called a Wu structure. And that allows us uh, to, divide by two, because that means this is going to be even again. 
And uh, in general, um, well, in the cases we are interested in, usually uh, having a spin structure implies having a Boole structure. So we don't really have to worry about that. Um, okay. Now, now the whole point was that we wanted to define this churn Simon theory so that such that it realizes these uh, self dual gauge fields in string theory M theory. So the F4 and F7 or F5 in type 2B self dual as boundary mode. So, how can we see this? Um, these were studied, uh, for example, by Witten when he was trying to construct the effective M5 brain action or in. Um, and uh, also more generally for these topologically non-trivial fields in this paper. Um, so, sorry. Um, okay, so to do this, uh, to see this, let's look at the example of a chiral scalar living in two dimensions. Um, then, um, then we can, uh, what we, we have to do to see this boundary mode is, uh, so we, we have this general summon in three dimensions, which for which we want to see the chiral scalar as a boundary mode. Uh, and then we want to add this kinetic action for this gauge field A, uh, where F is the curvature of A. So the kinetic action would have this coupling one over two E squared times uh, this integral of F which is star F. Um, then varying this action would give us the equation of motion one over E squared d star of f minus i f equal to zero. To see this boundary mode, we want to impose the boundary condition that A vanishes on the boundary of M3, uh, which we call X2. So A vanishing on the boundary. Then in this case, we can take M3 uh, to be near the boundary of the form and interval times X2, where at zero in this interval, we have the boundary X2. Um, then for this uh, kind of boundary condition, to satisfy it, we can take the curvature of this gauge field to be of the form d e to the m tau times fa, where tau is a coordinate on the interval here, and fa is a field defined on the boundary X2. So when we substitute this f into this equation of motion, we get uh, that the star of fa must be equal to if and the star of fa is zero. And these are precisely the self-duality uh, condition for a gauge field uh, with field strengths fa living on the boundary x2 uh, in Euclidean signature. Okay, so now that we see this uh, boundary mode, uh, we want to see, okay, how do we actually define the, the how do we get the BF theory from this transformation action, uh, which can be constructed for the self dual field? So let's go to two, two examples and consider type 2B, where we have a four form R field, which is self dual. Uh, so star of F5 is equal to F5. Um, and so it's self dual, and it has characteristic class N5 and connection C4. For this uh, four form, we can construct an action, a transformation action. Uh, so that, as we just saw, you can realize this four form as its boundary mode. Uh, so here, this transform is defined for, defined for this uh, gauge field G6, which has the characteristic class NG, uh, connection G5, and curvature FG. Uh, then, then if you look at some examples, for example, if you put type 2B on C2 mode Z times M6, uh, this gives us a 60 reduction on this space, which gives us 62,0 theory. Uh, now, how do we get the BF theory for this? Uh, remember the BF theory is seven dimensional, so we need to take an 11 to be uh, the boundary of a stream C2 mod Zn, which is a stream mod Zn times Z8, where Z8, has boundary N7 where we want to define the BF theory. Then uh, reducing this transformation on this uh, C3 mod uh, Zn, S3, sorry, S3 mod Zn, uh, we get this eight dimensional action. And uh, then by Stokes law, uh, making some assumptions, we see that this uh, can be written as a seven dimensional action. Uh, and this is exactly the BF theory uh, for this 60 theory. So here C4 is uh, has trivialization C3 on um, N7 if uh, H4 of N7 is zero. Uh, 
so in general, uh, you may wonder, can we write this, uh, can we classify the 62 comma zero theories, uh, their symmetries uh, using this BF action, as I said earlier, that's what we want to do, but actually we cannot always uh, do this. Uh, so we cannot always specify uh, consistent boundary condition uh, so that to make this 60 theory an absolute theory, sometimes it's only defined as a relative theory. And uh, this is discussed in this paper. So it's only for specific values of n, which uh, for which we can fix the boundary condition to get an absolute theory. Okay, so um, let's look at another example. In M theory, we had this F1, F7 uh, as a self dual pair. And there we can define the chern Simon, uh, which realizes this as a boundary mode to be G5 times G8, uh, to get it over a 12 dimensional manifold. Uh, Let's put again M theory, reduce it on this C2 mod Zn. Here we get a seven dimensional theory. And uh, this would have an eight dimensional uh, BF theory. So we extend this eight dimensional space to Z9 and define the Chern Simon on stream mod Zn times Z9. And um, then reducing on a stream mod, Z, a stream mod Zn of this Chern Simon gives us this. Um, this action, a dimensional action uh, with this C3 and C6 defined on Z8. Now, if we take H3 and H6 of F N7 to be zero, we can say C3 is DC2 and C6 is DC5. So using a Stokes term, we can rewrite this again um, in this form. And this would be the, the BF theory corresponding to the 7D theory classifying its symmetries. Okay, uh, this, uh, with this, uh, this we, we get to the conclusion. So uh, we saw that by uh, dimensional reduction of this trans Simon theory uh, constructed for these self-dual fields, uh, we can get the BF theory. And uh, although I discussed these higher form symmetries and uh, anomalies, uh, their anomalies, we, we, what we really want to do is to define the full symmetry TFT and classify all the possible uh, more generalized symmetries, such as non-invertible symmetries and higher groups. Um, uh, there is some progress in this direction, and we'll hear by Eduardo in the next talk uh, about non-invertible symmetries, uh, but more, much more needs to be done, and uh, there is a lot to do in the future. Okay, thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Sagar. Questions for Sagar? Hi, so, so I have a, like, a very basic question. So you talked a bit about the relative and absolute theories. Mm -hmm. Can I think about a relative theory as a theory with a gauge anomaly? Or is it uh, something more subtle? Uh, so when I talk about relative, uh, what I really mean is um, one that's doesn't have a fixed global symmetry uh, because sometimes relative is also referred to when there is this anomaly inflow and it has anomaly theory but uh, in I took the convention where relative just means that uh, there is a non-real BF theory in my case and the global symmetry is not fixed um, so if, if it has anomaly uh, it would still be absolute in my case but has a fixed global symmetry if that's clear Okay. Okay. Thanks. So I also have a question, or maybe Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also had a quick question that is connected to the one before. So just because you were saying it, can you can you say again in the uh, in the two comma zero example that you gave, mm -hmm. where you had the, the the flux parameter, you were saying that there's there's some that there is a flux choice you can make sort of that makes it an absolute theory. Can you can you maybe comment on that? What you have to do. Yeah, so, um, yeah, okay, I actually have some slide on that. So here, um, for the 62 comma zero theory, the BF theory had this form, C3, which this C3. And if we take N to be K squared, uh, if we take, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, N to be K squared, then uh, we can specify boundary conditions for this theory. Um, and if we take uh, C3 on the boundary to be H3, but where now H3 is at N valued, uh, where 
um, then we can rewrite this boundary condition as uh, some, in terms of some action. Um, and adding this to this action, um, then we, we would find uh, that uh, we get an anomaly by variation of the action for this uh, H3, um, which this is an absolute now we have an anomaly, but uh, if we take n to be non not to be k squared in general, then um, then uh, and vary this uh, action with respect to uh, C three um, and uh, y, we see that that this uh, C three would have to be. Um, Valued as uh, as that and take a gauge field which is has this uh, order or disorder um, and this would then be consistent unless n is m s squared. Um, sorry, it was not very clear to so me, but uh, I hope you know what I'm saying. So you can ask me if if I wasn't clear. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, distracting me. Okay, in the interest of time. And mm -hmm. if there is no urgent question, let's thank Sagar again. Thank you.